In the heart of the most powerful thunderstorms on Earth, invisible forces twist air into a rotating colossus strong enough to hold a million tons of water in the sky. This rotating monster can stretch from the ground to a height many times that of Mount Everest, and today we're going to step inside it. In our last video, we watched a supercell thunderstorm come to life. Now let's dive into its most fascinating feature, the mesocyclone, where vertical velocities can exceed 100 miles per hour and the rotation can be so strong it's measurable from weather radar dozens of miles away. A mesocyclone is a rotating column of rising air, typically two to six miles wide, that extends through much of the storm's height. A storm with a persistent mesocyclone is known as a supercell. To qualify as a mesocyclone, the rotation must persist for at least 10 minutes with a strong rotation indicated on radar aloft. Mesocyclones are typically best detected in radar scans, though there are visual clues to them as well. The formation process of a mesocyclone begins with wind shear. Specifically, we need both directional and speed shear to make a mesocyclone possible. When winds turn and increase with height, they create horizontal vorticity in the lower atmosphere. When a thunderstorm updraft moves over this air rich in spin, it tilts this horizontal vorticity vertically. As the updraft stretches this vorticity upwards, it increases the rotational velocity. Think of a figure skater pulling in their arms as the column of rotating air is stretched vertically. Conservation of angular momentum causes it to spin faster. The mesocyclone is the beating heart of a supercell thunderstorm. It is the process by which everything else flows from. As the tornado titans track this supercell across western Kansas, they're witnessing a perfect example of everything we've discussed. The storm towers above them, its rotating structure clearly visible in the laminar bands feeding into the mesocyclone. It's a teaching moment even for veteran chasers, nature's laboratory in action. The mesocyclone doesn't just spin, it reshapes the entire storm around it, like a potter molding clay on a wheel. At its core, the rotating updraft creates an intense drop in pressure, often exceeding 10 millibars. This sudden low pressure acts like a massive atmospheric vacuum, drawing air inward from all directions. But here's where it gets fascinating. Because the mesocyclone is rotating, the inflowing air can't just rush straight in. Instead, it spirals upward along the edges of the updraft, forming those dramatic curved cloud bands we call striations. These striations are more than just beautiful. They're the storm's fingerprints, revealing the power of its rotation. Closer to the ground, the mesocyclone sculpts the storm even more dramatically. The low pressure and rising air pull the cloud base downward, forming a wall cloud, a rotating, often ominous lowering that could be a sign of impending tornado activity within supercells. In the most iconic storms like mothership supercells, this process creates the illusion of the entire storm hovering above the plains, sculpted into one of the atmosphere's most mesmerizing displays of power and artistry. Picture yourself standing at the base of a supercell, that mesocyclone we've been talking about. It's orchestrating an incredible choreography of rising and sinking air. Let's break this dance down. First, we have our updraft, the star of the show. It's not just rising air, it's a freight elevator to the stratosphere. We're talking about air rushing upward at highway speeds, sometimes faster than 100 miles per hour. And here's what makes it special. As the mesocyclone spins, it actually shapes this updraft into something that looks like a barbell. This rising air is typically five to 10 degrees warmer than its surroundings, which is why it shoots up so explosively. 
But for every action, there's a reaction. That's where our downdrafts come in, and we actually have two of them. On one side, we have the forward flank downdraft. Imagine a curtain of cold rain and hail dragging air down with it. This air is typically five to 10 degrees cooler than the environment, but it's the rear flank downdraft that often gets meteorologists excited. This one's usually warmer and drier, and it's absolutely crucial for understanding whether a storm might produce a tornado. These downdrafts aren't just falling air, they're the mesocyclone's way of breathing. Every time they punch downward, they help feed new air into the updraft, keeping this whole incredible machine running. The team watches intently as the rear flank downdraft carves its clear slot into the storm structure. Above them, the rotating updraft base tells a story of incredible power. It's moments like these when even experienced storm chasers fall silent, watching the careful choreography of invisible forces sculpting the sky. Now you understand how the mesocyclone functions as a complex rotating engine within the supercell. In our next video, we'll explore the upper levels where overshooting tops and anvil dynamics play crucial roles in storm intensity.